you need to remember that you know we were back in the beginning of our Christian life. This is the beginning of the sacraments in the church. Uh, it's the beginning of a journey, and as we do this, we will do several things in the, uh, in the ritual of baptism, several rites that all reflect something that's happening inside. The, uh, the real baptism is the mystery. We don't understand exactly what's happening, but we know that God is coming into our hearts and into our souls and going to be there forever. Uh, as we receive baptism, we are pronounced to be priests, prophets, and kings, and using the oil that we use, the, 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 the sacred chrism oil, which is the same oil that we use for the dedicated the church you guys are here. Uh, we put oil all over the entire altar the archbishop did. That's dedicating that space to God. Uh, when we when we bless the four walls of the church, is also we're dedicating the space to God. It is holy place. So today, as we consecrate them with the oil on their head, we are consecrating them to God. They become God's children. And in becoming God's children, we also commit to raise them, to bring them up to become uh, good Christians, to become good examples of who Christ was in the world. So if we do that, as we do this, we pronounce them to be priest, prophet, and king. Okay, that's who Jesus was. He was a priest, he was a prophet, he was a king. Uh, he was a priest because in the Old Testament times, people would take sacrifices every year to cover over for their sins for their entire year. Uh, so they would uh, butcher a goat or a sheep or something like that and take the blood and offer it at the altar to cover over for sins because it took life to cover for sin. Life takes away death. Uh, so then Jesus came and he says, I have come to fulfill all the commands, to fulfill all the laws, to fulfill all the promises that he had made from the very beginning of time. So he offered the final sacrifice. He was the blood that was taken to the Father. He suffered uh, sacrifice, and then also he was the priest. He was the one who took the sacrifice to, to God the Father. When he left, he says, I am going now to the Father, and I will leave you here to do the work that I did. And you will do not only what I did, but you will do greater things. You know, it's hard to imagine that we can be a priest, a prophet, and a king, and do greater things than Christ did when he was here. But what he chose to do is to work through his body and continue the work that he started through us. It's not that we are worthy, it's that he is worthy who is working in us. And so together today, as we baptize these children, we are committing to, to help them to become a priest, a prophet, and a king. The prophet is the one who brings the message of God to us. In the Old Testament times, they perceived God to be this, this cranky God who would punish them for all the bad things they did and condemn people and, and people would die and stuff like that. But that was our perception of who God was. When Jesus came, he was the perfect prophet in that he showed us who the Father was. He showed us the love of the Father himself and the forgiveness and the mercy that the Father has for us. And that's what we're supposed to reach out now, is that same mercy and love and forgiveness that God has for us. We're supposed to reflect that. I often think of us as mirrors in the world. You know, we're, we're, we're agents of God. We're not God ourselves. But we're mirrors who reflect back what we receive from God. To the degree that we polish ourselves, to the degree that we understand and that we love others, to that degree we become better mirrors and we reflect more of God. So as we go through life and learn more about God, learn more about our faith, learn more about loving one another, we become better mirrors. We reflect more of God. So you can see people in, the, in, in your life and there's people that you see sometimes that you think they're holy people. And, uh, and they are. And we all are in our own way. But we are all members of the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ in the world, we have done a lot greater things than Jesus did when he was here. He had a few thousand Christians. Now they're, what, 1.2 billion or 2.1 billion, something like that Christians. We have more than, than made up for what he said. But it's not us. It's God in us that is working. The king is the one who protects and uh, feeds and watches over and guards the sheep. Uh, Jesus is often called the good shepherd. The king protects his people, the good shepherd protects his sheep. So we are entrusted then to take care of these children and to, and to raise them up. Particularly your godparents, you have been selected because you're very holy people. Uh, you're the best that they could find. 
you're the loving people that, that you should be, and you, you reflect God's spirit in, in what you do, in what you say. So you have been selected for God's hands because you are the ones that will set the example that will be there for these children. Okay, so we'll begin in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And what name do you give your child? Okay. And what do you ask of God's church for your children? Baptism. Okay. Parents, you have asked to have your children baptized. In doing so, you're accepting the responsibility of training them in the practice of the faith. It will be your duty to bring them up to keep God's commandments as Christ taught us by loving God and our neighbor. Do you clearly understand what you're undertaking? Yes. God, parents, are you ready to help the parents of these children in their duty as Christian parents? Yes. Nehemiah and Charlotte, the Christian community, welcomes you with great joy. In its name, I claim you for Christ our Savior by the sign of his cross. I will now trace the sign of the cross on your forehead and invite parents and God to do the same. I claim you for Christ. And We have a short reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Do I have a volunteer for this one? A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The, um, the gospel clearly tells us that God gave all authority to Jesus and said, bring it to the earth and distribute it, give it to all people. He says, all authority has been given to me. Go baptize everyone in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The word baptize has a lot of strong, strong meaning. It's like, uh, well, one example would be a loaf of bread. You know, you take flour, you take lard, you take, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> salt and yeast. So five ingredients. And you put it together and it becomes a loaf of bread. Can you go back out and separate those ingredients? No. 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 It becomes a different entity, doesn't it? It becomes something totally different, and it stays that way. This is the way with baptism. We are united with Christ in such a way that we become, with Christ, another entity. We become the body of Christ. And so from now on, they will not be able to be separated. So what does this mean? Is when we go to heaven, or when God looks at Jesus, he looks at us. He sees us as a community. He sees us as a family. He sees us as all belongings just as much as Jesus belongs to him. So we are all included in this body of Christ, in this family of God, and we become as one. Well. We become totally united in such a way that we could not be separated. So as we are united in the body of Christ, we are also given the responsibility to teach people the commandments, to teach especially our children the commandments. And how do we teach more than anything else is by example, more than by uh, words, okay? by example. The music you guys used to play was a wonderful example. I mean, it's still playing on circuit, not this. <laughs> You're not singing. It was awesome. But, you know, you, you, you set an example for people by what you do and what you say. How you treat other people. How you love other people. How you can be concerned about other people yourself. That's what, that's what teaches the children how to grow up and how to behave. In an education class I was taking, they used to tell us that uh, the children by the age of two had pretty much gotten their life's set of goals and of uh, outlook on life. They're either going to be happy children or sad children, or they're going to be uh, somehow affected by the first two years of their life. So it's very important that we, that we nurture them and love them and take care of them and bring them up to know what love is. Okay. Uh, let's go to page five. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ask our Lord Jesus Christ to look lovingly on his children who are to be baptized.
baptized, on their parents and godparents, and on all the baptized. By the mystery of your death and resurrection, bathe these children in light, give them the new life of baptism, and welcome them into your holy church. We pray to the Lord. For baptism and confirmation, make them your faithful followers and witnesses to your gospel. We pray to the Lord. Make the lives of their parents and godparents examples of faith to inspire these children. We pray to the Lord. Keep their family always in your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Renew the grace of our baptism in each one of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear On the next page, we have the invocation of saints, and uh, you'll notice we have five invocations there, and then the last one, all holy men and women, pray for us. We have an open-ended comment like that, because we all have some, some family member who has died that we know is very holy, and we're sure is with God. They also can pray for us. Anybody who is in, in heaven can pray for us. And we can ask our grandmother, our aunt, or somebody that's very holy that we know is there to also continue to pray for us. And we ask them to pray for us because they're close to God and they can intercede for us. They can, they can keep us in mind. They can help us to become stronger and to become better at what we're supposed to be doing. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us. St. John the Baptist, pray, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray, pray for us. St. Peter and St. Paul. Pray for us. St. Jude Thaddeus. Pray for us. All holy men and women. Pray for us. Dear parents and godparents, you have come here to present these children for baptism. By water and the Holy Spirit, these children are to receive the gift of new life from God, who is love. On your part, you must make it your constant care to bring them up in the practice of the faith. See that the divine life, which God gives them, is kept safe from the poison of sin, to grow always stronger in their heart. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, renew now the vows of your own baptism. Reject sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus. This is the faith of the church. This is the faith in which these children are about to be baptized. So I ask you, do you reject Satan? I do. In all his works. In all his empty promises. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. And at this first anointing, we'll anoint their chest with the oil of catechumens. This oil symbolizes the healing, the strength, the beauty. Uh, in the old old time, people used to put oil all over themselves before they went into the stadium to uh, the gladiators did and, and so on. Just, just to look stronger, to look more radiant, to look more alive. In fact, I think bodybuilders today still anoint themselves with oil when they, when they go and pose and, and try, to, uh, try to show off their muscles. You know. So it's a, it's a sign of beauty. It's a sign of strength. It's a sign of, uh, of inspiration. It's uh, the oil that we use in the church for the catechumens. Those are being prepared to become Christians. Those are in the preparation stage of becoming Catholic. Okay. Uh, when I anoint their, their chest with oil, it symbolizes that they are now in the process of growing up, in the process of receiving Christ, of being part of Christ. My dear children, I anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May He strengthen you with His power to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we now ask God to give these children new life and abundance through water and the Holy Spirit. 
Father God, our mercy through these waters of baptism. We have filled us with new life as our very own children. Blessed be God. From all who are baptized in water and the Holy Spirit, you have formed one people united in your Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed be God. You have set us free and filled our hearts with the spirit of your love that we may live in your peace. Blessed be God. You call those who have been baptized to announce the good news of Jesus Christ to people everywhere. Blessed be God. You have called your children through the cleansing water and rebirth that by sharing the faith of your church they might have eternal life. We ask you, Lord, to bless this water and that they will be baptized. We ask this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. All of you touch him. And his total name is Nehemiah Miguel. Nehemiah Miguel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and welcome you into his holy people. He now anoint you with the chrism of salvation as Christ was anointed, priest, prophet, and king. So may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Today they're dressed in a white garment. The white garment symbolizes the victory and righteousness that Christ won for all humanity and is given, given to them as a gift. Now, the gift of righteousness and the gift of purity is given to them through the blood of Jesus Christ. My dear children, you have been become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment the offered sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Amen. And here is the hard part. You're going to have to go and light the candle.
Christ's parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. These children have been enlightened by Christ. They are yeah. always the children yeah. of the light. May they keep the flame of faith alive in their hearts when the Lord comes. May they go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Amen. The Lord Jesus made the deaf hear and the dumb speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, these children have been reborn in baptism. They are now called children of God, for so indeed they are. In confirmation, they will receive the fullness of God's Spirit. In holy communion, they will share the banquet of Christ's sacrifice, calling God their Father in the midst of the church. In the name of these children and the Spirit of God's family, let us pray together in the words our Lord has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Amen. And you can extinguish the candles if you want. God the Father, through his Son, the Virgin Mary's child, has brought joy to all Christian parents, as they see the hope of eternal life shine on in their children. May he bless the parents of these children They will be the first teachers of their children. May they also be the best of teachers, bearing witness to the faith by what they say and do. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. <coughs> by God's gift, the water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn to everlasting life. In his goodness, may he continue to pour out his blessings upon these sons and daughters of his. May he make them always, wherever they may be, faithful members of his holy people. May he send his peace upon all who are gathered here in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This concludes our service, and it is my pleasure, my honor, to introduce to you the two newest members of our parish, Nehemiah and Charlotte. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.